Getting your cameras to orbit objects is fairly straightforward and it's a really good way of showing off your renders and you can paste it over video with a transparent background as you can see here. So let's go through how to do that. So let's start by adding something interesting to rotate around. So I'll delete the default cube and add in a monkey. I'll press control two, that will add a subdivision surface modifier with two levels. Go to side view and put it on the floor. I'll right click shade smooth and I think that looks nice. I'll press shift A to add mesh and then plane so it's got a floor to sit on. And now I want to set my camera up so it rotates around my monkey. Let's look through the camera so I can press the camera button up here or numpad zero. And I can lock my camera to view with the button underneath and then position my camera. I'll start off at the front because that's a good starting position and I'll set up my camera where I want to begin. So it's nicely zoomed in on Suzanne. Let's now go to top view with seven on my numpad. Remember you've got the Cartesian coordinates up here and you can choose top view by clicking on the Z. I'll zoom out just a touch and shift A to add curve and then circle. So this is gonna be my circle that the camera will follow. I'll press S to scale, and scale it up so it matches the distance of my camera. If I move around, you can see my camera and circle set up there. If I select the camera first and the circle last, so shift left click on the circle, the circle becomes the active object that's highlighted in yellow there. That means when I press control P to parent, and you can also find that under the object menu down to parent, I can now choose follow path. So when that's selected, you can see a black dotted line indicating the camera is now parented to the circle. Now, when I come down to my timeline at the bottom, so you can see my timeline down here, and I click and drag, you can see the camera rotating around up to frame 100. Now, if we want to change the frame, make sure the circle is selected or is the active object, I can go to the curve properties here, to the object data properties, scroll down, and there's a path animation. If I open that up, I can change the number of frames here. So if I change this to 200, you'll see that it jumps to the other side, of course, and it will continue up until 200 now. I'll keep that at 100 though. This is a bit quicker and it will zoom around like this. You do have to remember to change the end frame to 100 to make sure it's the correct length. Now when I play, it will repeat when it gets to 100 and this will be a nice smooth animation of 100 frames that you can repeat. Now lastly, if I go to frame zero, if you want to make sure the camera is always pointing at a certain object, you can set up a target constraint. I always like to choose an empty for this. So shift A to add empty plane axis. I'll scale that up so we can see it nice and easily. Select the camera and we add a constraint to the camera. So down to the constraints menu, add object constraint, track two. And then under the target, I can select the picker and choose the empty. And you'll see my camera moves slightly. There's a blue line now pointing to the middle of the empty. Let's look through camera view once again. And I just need to move the empty up slightly. So select the empty, G to grab in the Z, move that up to make sure this is in the middle of the frame. And now you can see I've got a circular orbital animation. One last useful trick, if I go to rendered view and choose the render engine cycles, we have the option in cycles of changing the floor to a shadow catcher. I'll just quickly change this to the GPU and turn on denoise so it's a bit faster. With the ground selected, I can go to the object properties just here, scroll down and under visibility, I can change to shadow catcher. Then you'll just get the shadow and not the rest of it, and it will render the background transparent. Therefore, you can put this in your videos where you've got other stuff going on in the scene. So there we have it. That's how we set up an orbital camera or a camera that rotates around the target. If you've got any questions, then do comment below. If you like the style of teaching, then do check out the links in the description for more great content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.